not work with grammar is, number one, it takes too long. You, you, you start and then you have to learn all the clauses and before you can make any sense of it. Number two, you never use it. Do you ever hear anybody in a conversation anywhere who speaks grammar? Oh, we're talking about life, my children, about food, about work, about everything in your life. Nobody says, well, speaking of grammar, nobody does it. It's a waste of good time. And it wasn't invented by the people who initially began to use language. There, was, there were various phases for those who know linguistics and do it historically remind us that first language was signatory. You signified. You didn't have words developed, but you pointed and you would cross your hands or whatever it is that you did. It was signatory speech. You communicated with one another by signs. Now, you know, close your mouth and that kind of stuff. Then later words were developed. Then there entered picture language. Pictures were drawn. Picture, I forget how the word is, but it's... Pictograph. Picture, pictograph, thank you, my dear. Pictograph language. And then hieroglyphic language, which became religious and were used peculiarly in uh, churches and, and synagogues and uh, where they worship the gods and the like. So different kinds of language developed. But then finally came the grammarians, and God forgive them, but they introduced, this is how you should say it. So it's wrong to say, um, if you're talking about a plural, if you're talking about a plural, it is no good if you're talking about a they are no good. You have to have they instead of it. Well, that now works. And if you don't use the now established grammar, everybody would mock you and they would say, you, you don't know how to speak for pity's sake. So grammar, I would leave grammar until I cared about grammar until I came to places where grammar was essential. So, number one, it takes up too much time and no body uses it but the scholarly types and they only use it with in sets of circumstances where you and I cannot speak to one scholar from one scholar to another without using established accepted way of saying it. Does God like grammar? Huh? Does God like grammar? No. God never invented grammar. God enabled man, gave him the ability and the power to communicate better and better. The question about is grammar better and better only after man invented it? Or did it exist before that? God didn't speak Hebrew. God didn't speak whatever other languages. I, 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 Aramaic? I, that'll do it. All of those will do. He didn't speak those languages. He taught people because they had no language and God gave them 
language that has enabled them to develop was to communicate. And, and he, he gave us the gift, Revelation, Genesis 1. He enabled us to, he gave us the ability to rule the world and uh, to uh, create. So he gave us the gifts, the ability to do that. And we started working and signing one to another. Here's what we will do. Come, come, you know. We would, we would waver and say, follow me or something like that. It was only many years later when terms like follow and come here and those kinds of things. It's only when we would sit down on a piece of wood Later on, we would develop to the distinguish between a piece of wood that we're sitting on and a piece of wood that we're doing something else with. And we come up with words like... Chair. Huh? Chair. Chairs and... T uh, yeah, exactly so. So God isn't interested in grammar. Not grammar. Interested profoundly in speech but people don't speak grammar only the scholars only those that invented that stuff and one writer who uh his name is gone from me from the minute but he said of another writer he used to be able to write great literature and somebody introduced him to grammar. And that is so true. Get so dramatic, get so grammatical. Your speech becomes stilted. It becomes uh, almost uh, rationalistic. And you lose the riches. Words, new words are developing. Behold, beloved, big words develop. We, we develop, we develop important words. A husband and wife make love together. She becomes pregnant. I can't remember what the first Word is that this developing baby is called. Embryo. An embryo will do even fetus. earlier than that. Fetus. And, and that's, a, that's a, a, a later development. Fetus is, is a later development. But each of those words describes the developing human in various phases. And the same thing is true with animals. I mean, you see it in life. Life won't let you stick with grammar. Um, um, a dog, when it's just early born, it's a little puppy. Puppy. And then when it develops and it's now a tall developed thing, it's not called a puppy anymore. The, the living language will not be held by grammar and to, and to become someone who is, who I know grammar. Well, good for you. How much conversation do you hold with it? None at all, except when he's talking to grammarians and then they start testing one another. Well, what's your leader? How's that word? for it used today, you know, and then they argue, but that's the wrong way to even say the word, you know, that kind of thing. Life. I mean, ordinary people, intelligent people, you understand, but ordinary people don't bother with grammar. Now, when you come to reading literature in the Bible, now you've got words already established. And if you read closely, 
you know, if you're interested in it and you spend the time reading it, you don't have to know a word about grammar. You see that verb there? You see that verb? It's present indicative active. Who cares? Well, if you were going to study and be a student and get your doctor's degree and all of that, yeah, you would do that. But what is a present indicative active? What is an aorist tense? All you have to know is, all you have to know is, if someone says it's an aorist and you say, I don't understand that word, then someone who spends any time at all listening to uh, those who know Greek will say, an aorist tense means that the deed, the event that's in view, has already happened. But you don't have to remember the word. You don't have to remember what's its origin or anything else about it. You now know that that means, and all of the tenses in Greek, they don't deal with time as they do a lot, mostly in English. But in England, in, uh, in Greek, Greek um, it doesn't deal with time. The question is, has the event happened? Has it been completed? A present tense means it's not yet happened or completed. It's happening, happened. A perfect tense, and I'm going to end with this on that. The perfect tense is that it has been completed and it still stands having been completed. It wasn't wrecked or anything like that. So when you're told that that's the case, you don't have to know the grammar. All you have to remember him saying that is uh, an event that has taken place already. After that, you don't need anything about it. So are you saying that people can read the Bible without being grammarians? Absolutely. Okay. No, because... because the translation, translation and grammar, yes? Translation and grammar sometimes touch, but translation is not the same as grammar. I speak Chinese. Someone translates it into English. What they do is, they take my, I don't speak English, I don't speak Chinese, but if I did, now let me change that. I speak English, I speak in English, and if someone translates it into Chinese, what they do is they explain what I said in English, and they don't have to say a word about grammar. Is that clear? If it's not, pursue me on that one point. Translation. I pick up a Bible. I can't read Hebrew or any of those languages. I pick up an English Bible. I can read an English Bible. Some of the words may I not be... They're all English, of course. And I understand English. I don't have to... I don't mind... I don't even know very well the grammar of English grammar. If someone asks me, can you give me a conversational discussion about English grammar? I'm well acquainted with English. But I'm not well acquainted with English grammar. I never had a formal uh, study on grammar. I heard my mother my father, my sisters and brothers using it. I heard my school teachers using it. 
I heard all the people. I read good uh, literature once it was translated and saw how they used it. I'd hang grammar if I were going to teach it again. All right, let's end there. Okay.